Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Arthritis Show, a global information source dedicated to patients with arthritis and sports injuries. Joining us today in our studios is Dr. Paula Bromberg. Dr. Paula Bromberg is a psychologist. She's an integrative psychologist, and she's a frequent uh, consultant to our show. Well, welcome, doctor. Great. How are you? Good to be here. Excellent. Now, for our audience out there that are not familiar with the word integrative psychology, what is that all about, Doc? Well, it combines all the bodies. You know, it, 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 I'll follow what Roman said about the physical body is also about the emotional body. So integrative means it combines the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, and it integrates them into one. So it's a holistic approach. Okay. And... So essentially, basically, you're not just looking at somebody's mind. You're going through the whole system, and you're, you're trying to uh, not just be focused in one thing, but kind of like looking at the big picture, right? Right. I'm looking at the forest as well as the tree. So like when that. someone's just looking at the tree, they don't have an overview, and, they're, they're, and, and leaving components out. Um, for example, if somebody's trying to lose weight, but they're eating processed food only a little bit, they're not going to be healthy. So integrative means we look at each part from an overview of the forest and then each little detail. Perfect. So uh, now you were trying to, you were saying that the continuity of, uh, we spoke last week, I believe, about uh, how important it is to talk to some of these patients who, they feel somewhat depressed because they got the arthritis. They feel like, you know, uh, if you are taking somebody who's very active, who's very young, and uh, suddenly this person develops knee pain and they cannot run or they cannot do, go bowling or anything like that, it's only normal for these people to feel somewhat uh, uh, depressed because they're not functioning well. And you, we're going over that, uh, uh, that Last week when you were here, we were talking about that, and I know you wanted to continue on, on that base, right? Well, I was starting to explain that there are five natural emotions, and, and then there are aberrations or distortions. So depression is an aberration of grief. And many children, many times we as children, we're not allowed to feel loss, separation, grief, particularly for boys, they weren't allowed to cry. And it gets lodged in the body. So that these traumas, what Roman was talking about with the arthritis, in the emotional body, these traumas create um, distortions called depression or rage or uh, envy instead of the natural emotion of jealousy. And these natural emotions allow us to develop and the distorted aberrations get uh, more like depression. It's pushed down, lodged into our emotional body and so we're not really functioning at our optimal at all. That kind of makes sense. Now, for some of the audience out there, if you could describe what are the five emotions that you were speaking about. Well, the natural emotions are jealousy, uh, which is a hard one for people to understand. Jealousy means that if your older sister is bike riding, you feel jealous and then inspired to do it yourself. The aberration. So it could be a positive thing. It is positive. It is positive. The, the, the negative is envy, meaning I don't want, I hope she falls off the bicycle. I don't want her to bike ride. It's not inspirational. And then there's anger, love, um, uh, grief. So anger, love, grief, envy, envy. Uh, jealousy. Perfect. Yeah. And so what you do is you basically, when you are doing integrative psychology, you go through all these emotions and, and you see where the patients are, right? Well, my tool is, my, is language, you know, just like your tool uh, is your hands and, the, and, and studying Needle. people in that way, needles. My tool is conversation. So there's something very profound and healing about conversation and revealing the truth. Most people live in a lot of distortions and illusions, and so we try to unravel and come to what's really the truth, which is very simple. So life isn't that complicated. It's pretty simple. Perfect. No. You also authoring uh, a, a new book. Uh, I don't know where do you find the time. You're, you're practicing. You're writing books. This is a very special book to you. Uh, I, I want you to please. The, uh, I want, I'm going to ask my director here to put your uh, the picture of the book up. Let's talk about the book for a few minutes. I know you've been working on it for uh, 
uh, several years, and it's right. over a thousand pages by now. It is. It's it's my practice. It's a meditation. Um, I love writing. I'm a writer, and um, it's educational. I, I really want the first part is memoir, and uh, but memoir not just my life. It's explaining to people how to sit at the feet of your life and use your life, so that whatever the circumstances of your life are, whether your parents were divorced or whether you came from another country or you had a car accident. Uh, you played volleyball and you can't play anymore. There's a teaching in these situations. It's not a situation to only be depressed or be angry about. There's something profoundly educational about all of the circumstances in our life. And so the first part is to teach us how to sit at the feet and use our life. And the second part has 26 tools, ways to awaken, ways to become conscious. And they describe uh, what kind of mind we have, what kind of personality. Um, you know, ways to study ourselves. This is a book that's really about know thyself. Perfect. I know Roman Garcia wanted to, you wanted to make a comment on this possibly? Well, Dr. What I would like to say is that uh, the, the ironic thing about well, the emotion of depression that we normally see with some patients is where it starts. And unfortunately, for a lot of these folks, a lot of these patients, where it starts is in the doctor's office itself. When they go see a doctor, and the doctor tells them that they have absolutely no help of recovering from this condition, and the only, the only thing that is left is to replace the joint immediate. If they weren't depressed before they went to the doctor's office, they leave that doctor's office in a very depressive state, which is normally when we see them. Because what all they see is a doctor telling them that they have absolutely no hope to do anything, anything about their condition. And once that idea sets in, ideas are very powerful entities. They can literally take over a patient's life. And, and, if, they, and if the doctor, the orthopedic surgeon, or whoever it is that tells them that they have no hope, if, they, if the doctor is helping that idea um, become part of the person's persona, eventually they will become or they will develop a depressive type of attitude towards their condition. And they themselves will start to believe that they have absolutely no hope to overcome this condition, of which we've seen many times that that is not the reality. There is, a, there is hope if you treat that condition properly. Well, you know, having no hope, uh, if you give the patient no hope, forget it. It's, you might as well close the case and, and uh, you know, because it's really hope that drives people. In fact, it's been shown that hope would help with some of the immune modulation as well. Hope, happy mood, happy mood uh, positive thinking, these are key things. Uh, what I wanted to say is <clears throat> if we've empowered ourselves, which is what I do with clients, so that when I went to a doctor and I, I detached my posterior tibial tendon and he said, you will never walk again if we don't do surgery. In, in my mind, he could not have been right. And so I left there knowing that I have other options to discover. So rather than feeling depressed, because I've done a lot of work on myself, I knew, I understood that there are a lot of other options, that he doesn't have to be right. And eventually I found my way to this mm -hmm. office. I had an in, you know, injection, and um, I'm 100% fine. So Beautiful. you know, I think for us, if we come empowered, Whatever circumstances arrive in our life, we're empowered in them. We don't have to be crushed. So that's in the nature and the work we do on ourselves. So I just want to add that a doctor, if we go in with a smile, even though the guy is depressing, he doesn't have to be the last word or the God. I mean, many doctors think they're God. There's a joke, and I don't know the answer, but you know the difference between God and the doctor. God knows there's some limits somewhere, and the doctor doesn't. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, you know they don't have all the answers. No, so they certainly don't. And we see this, actually, I see this quite often then. You know, and it has to do with basically, it's really, it's not patient. You know, the patient has no knowledge of medicine, right? right. No matter how, how you go on computer and all that, if you go to a doctor office, you feel that the guy's the authority on, on the right. field. So. Whatever he says to you is like word of Bible, and you know you try to uh, uh, follow the, uh, follow that. But 
In reality, it isn't so, so just like you said, there's limitations to doctor's knowledge. Absolutely, uh, and that's why we have the show. Yeah, and to give you a secret of my trade, most doctors, 99% uh, of doctors, you know, uh, basically they're, they're busy all day, they're in their office, whether they're doing surgery or procedures, by 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, they're tired, they just want to go home, watch TV, spend time with children, and go to sleep. Uh, they, there is no time here to go out there and do additional research and try to figure, to look outside the box and so on. And that is uh, one of the bigger things in medicine right now that, you know, uh, doctors try to take CME courses and all that, but the CME courses that they're taking has really to do with their field that they're in. It may not teach them anything additional. All right. Well, uh, thank you again, Dr. Romer, for coming. You're, you're always great uh, to have you. I have a great uh, knowledge, and it's great to share it with people out there. At this moment, we want to take a break. We haven't forgot about Sandy. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about possibly cell therapy for Sandy, who wrote us an email earlier on.